What's up guys, welcome to today's video. This is an exciting day for me. The condo is officially done. So I wanna give you guys a final tour, talk the numbers on it. If I were to go sell this right now, and then also talk what the actual plan is of making it a rental property. So it's December 31st today. So I guess I can say I finished this in 2023. I'm gonna be listing it in the next couple days here. I actually have my photographer coming here within the next hour to get the photos ready for the listing. Uh, I'm gonna list it for $1,695 a month or $1,700 a month here. Two bedroom, two bathroom, fully renovated property, 820 square feet with a garage attached downstairs, which is I think a huge selling point. Um, and in the $1,700 a month price point, there's not a lot of condos or apartment complexes that come with like your own garage that you can close off. It's not a carport and it's an actual garage, so I'll show you guys that. The kitchen here, we did a full, full renovation, all new cabinets, all new quartz countertops. Everything was discounted though, so I get pretty heavy discounts on my cabinets, like extremely good discount from my cabinet guy. So these, it's almost always makes sense for me to just replace the cabinets. I always talk about that. Uh, this was just a discounted slab, not my favorite slab, but if someone's gonna give me $500 off of it, I might as well take it, especially since it's a rental property anyways. I just need some durability out of it. Uh, went with brushed nickel on everything. Just, I don't know, I'm pulling a little bit more away from blacks as of lately and it's a rental property, so I think the durability on a brushed nickel will be a little bit more beneficial than if I were to make like a, just keep everything black. So we went with antique brass cabinet handles. I screwed these in myself, by the way, and the cabinets are all slow close. Um, what else do we do in here? All new appliances, one thing, couple of things that I want to talk about, like some of the um, uh, constructive criticism for myself. I should have just taken the extra time and measured what size fridge would have fit in here. But by the time this got in, like it's too late. It's such a hassle to try to return this fridge. Give me a new one. I'm just going to leave it in here. But I needed one that wasn't the standard depth. And then you got appliances. I should have spent, I don't even know what, oh, it's a fridge there. But this one's like a really cheap, Microwave, I should have spent an extra 50 bucks and just got a Frigidaire one rather than an Amana, I think is the brand on it. Nonetheless, um, it is in the price point, like you don't need anything fancy in here. We have the dining light right here, cheap little Wayfair one. Uh, I did get all new doors, and the reason for getting new doors, I could have probably left the single pane or the single panel doors in here, but there was only four of them in the entire house. One, two, primary bathroom and then four, so it's like, oh, might as well, it makes sense. You got your bathroom in here, brushed nickel once again, new toilets, uh, new toilets just always usually look a little bit cleaner. Um, bathroom's pretty standard in here. We went with a new light fixture on this one. Closet doors, another thing I learned on this property, this was a pain in the ass, always measure the closet door or the closet width um, because if it is a custom door or a custom width where they don't have the standard closet doors, it is a big pain in the ass. Like I had to buy three, and there's not even any uh, railing on the bottom for these right here, but I had to buy three normal doors just to cover up this closet right here because it was like a couple weeks out to get a custom sized closet door. So if they're not the standard 60 or 72 inch wide closet doors, maybe it's better to just leave the ones that were in there previously. And that cost me a lot of money too, not just the stress of it, but here's the primary bathroom. Um, Walk-in shower here. I think there might have been a tub before. I don't remember, honestly. Uh, there was a tub. Yeah, so there's a tub. We got the very slim fans, cheap fans as well. Um, In-unit washer and dryer. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and get a washer and dryer in here. I just. I need to get this thing listed and then once I get it rented out or an agreement rented out, I'll then, uh, I think you put the handles in there, whatever. So this is down into the garage. This is actually a shared hallway with the neighbor over here. And this is the garage, so this is a, a pretty much a good selling point. This is why I think I can get the price that I'm gonna list it at because it does come with the one car garage in here um, and an entire little section 
for storage right here. Storage right here as well. So yeah, that's it guys. Let me open this up, see if it works. What's up? Hey, Pop. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video here. I will get it listed within the next couple of days. Like I said, I have the photographer coming. I'm gonna list it on Zillow, but if you guys do have any interest in renting this out, I always try to offer it on social media first if you guys are interested, Glendale, Arizona. But when I first bought this property, the plan was to flip it, and I still do have quite a bit of equity into the property if I were to flip it. I bought it for $175,000, I believe, after closing costs, because I had the, it was off market, so I had to pay for the uh, seller closing costs as well, about like $178,000 all in. I put a little bit more money into it with the flooring, with the extra appliances, so I'm about $32,000 in compared to the our very original budget of $28,000, um, which puts me... 178, 180, like $210,000 um, all in with the purchase price and the closing costs and then the renovation. And I believe I can probably list this for 259 or 264.5 and probably get some good activity on it. But it's an opportunity cost for me. Like finding rentals at cash flow like this are a little bit more difficult right now and it's in a good community. So for right now, I think the best strategy is to just rent it out. And then maybe if it doesn't work out or it's not worth it, one or two years down the road, I can pretty much still guarantee I'll get the high 200s for this, have the cash flow from the last couple of years, not have to renovate it again and then make my equity when I go to sell it then. So that is the plan right now. At the end of the day, if I sold it for 260, closing cost of about 13,000, 247 minus 210 is about a 30, mid $30,000 profit on here with the hard money costs and everything like that. So yeah, I mean, there's the good thing about things like this is if you have two exit strategies, it's awesome. Another option that I was thinking about doing is just listing it for extremely high, like 280. And if someone offers me 280, like offload it, because at that point it's like, all right, you can make quite a bit of money. So maybe I'll list it for rent or for sale and whatever I like more I'll do on it. But yeah, it's a great little community. Um, not my favorite renovation, to be honest with you. Some of the worksmanship is what bugs me the most. Like, um, just like some small stuff that you walk through here afterwards and you're like a little bit upset with it, but there's always gonna be problems with it. Like for this example, my flooring guy left quite a bit of gaps between some in some sections of the floor and the wall. So even with the baseboards, there's still cracks. Um, I don't think he did a great job on leveling the floor, although it is a second story, so it's a little bit more difficult. Drywall guy, tried a new guy out, wasn't too happy with his quality of work. I just tried to save, try to try someone new, and I tried to save a few hundred bucks, and um, there's just a lot of texturing issues. My painter didn't come and do what he was supposed to do, so it all, like, all the small stuff, you really start to nitpick, but um, <clears throat> it's done. It's livable. It's great condition. I mean, those are just small things. It's still in great shape, but I'm just very hard on myself, especially with the amount of volume that we do. We have to be, hold ourselves to a high standard. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are interested um, in following me closely, Instagram and my TikTok will be in the description below. And if you guys do want investment properties, something like this, message me. I'd love to work with you guys. Anything in Arizona, friend, family, neighbor, if you know that they want to rent or sell a house, we can either buy it cash or I can help represent them as a realtor. So any referrals would be much, much appreciated. I'll make sure I take care of you guys, whoever sends me referrals. Um, I'll see you guys soon.